I am Lawrence Chuno, and this is Doing Jazz. Hello everyone and welcome to Doing Jazz. My name is Lawrence Chuno and this episode is with pianist, composer and singer Abelita Mateos. Abelita's rich cultural and musical background gives her playing a rare uncontrived soulfulness that is complete with artistic and emotional authenticity. This authenticity can be heard and felt on her new album Mixed Feelings. The liner notes for Mixed Feelings reads, I lived in Brazil for the first 30 years of my life. When I decided to move to another country, I had mixed feelings about the challenges I was about to face. The song playing in the background is the title track of the album. During my conversation with Abelita, you'll hear the songs Vamo Nessa, Ligia, and Patience. Towards the end of the conversation, you'll hear the song Pazinho. These songs are all from the album Mixed Feelings by Abelita Mateos. After listening to this episode, you can learn more about Abelita Mateos by going to the website of the show www.doingjazz.net. You can listen to more episodes of Doing Jazz by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the available podcast vendors. If you are on Spotify, please follow the Doing Jazz playlist, a one-stop playlist for songs by all the Doing Jazz guests so far. If you are on iTunes, please rate the show, leave a comment, and share the show with your loved ones. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I present Abelita Mateus in your face. Abelita Mateo. Mm-hmm. Did I mess it up? No, you didn't. Great. Welcome to Doing Jazz. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Nice, nice. You teach on Saturdays? I teach on Saturday mornings, okay. yes. Are this like, is this like a, a regular gig? A regular teaching gig? It is regular, yeah. Okay. I, I have several students, private students. Oh, okay. And... I like to do it, nice. you know. Sometimes I feel that I put a lot of time on it and I wish I had like a longer day mm. <laughs> where so I could teach and also have more time for myself. Mm-hmm. But I try to balance as, as you know, the best I can. Yeah. What does teaching do for you? What does it do what to you? What teaching does to me? Oh yeah. my God, so, so much, yeah. Um, I really love to see especially with children I, I teach children too um, okay. when they learn something um, I really like to be there to see like how their face like mm-hmm. light up you know oh and mm-hmm. are s- such simple things sometimes but the fact that they get it you know yeah. that feeling makes me feel so good yeah, you I, know? I see. and also to watch the struggle Mm. <laughs> and my students, you know, like, nice, yeah. um, reminds me of myself mm-hmm. and how much I'm dealing with that. Yeah, you yeah, know, because every you continue, day. no matter how good one is. Oh my you God! Yeah, absolutely. You have always something else to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, ab- absolutely. Yeah. And it's hard, you mm-hmm. know, to get the next to the next step. Yeah. So, I yeah. like to be involved, like, like you yeah. Know, uh, right do it. you think it balances out? Um, other parts of your artistry like 
composition, performance, and all those things, do you think that teaching gives you a perspective into those other parts of what you do? I think teaching uh, has made me like think about things in a more simple way um, because you realize how much um, sometimes like people don't need like very complicated yeah. things <laughs> you know to to feel touched or to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it yeah you know so I think this last years that I've been uh, teaching more especially since I moved here you know I mm -hmm. wasn't I was doing less in Brazil. Yeah. Um, I think brought this to myself, you know, this See. feeling of like trying to be more simple, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean that it's not deep. Yes, yeah, yeah. But but simple. I see. So when you say simple, because most piano teachers, um, when when I ask them what's the best way to learn a song, they tell me start with a melody on the right hand and your the bass note just one one finger on the on the left hand right you know and sometimes i realize that that's the only way i end up playing the song i don't even add any other thing on my left hand because i like the way it sounds that Absolutely. way you know yeah. i don't need to add the third <laughs> or the seventh yes. so, yeah so sometimes as you're saying sometimes it's good to actually see things in in a very simple way and then you discover that oh maybe less is actually more and absolutely I, yeah, yeah. you know it's funny that you mentioned that the melody mm -hmm. and the bass yeah. because just came to my mind something i was teaching yesterday right oh. i was teaching one of my <laughs> students this piece valsa da dor it's a villa lobos okay. piece uh, a brazilian composer mm -hmm. a classical mm -hmm. brazilian composer very beautiful mm -hmm. and it's just a little bit a little bit more advanced there's a bunch of chords in between on, yeah. on the second part but we were doing like the bass and the melody. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. for a while during the class. Yeah. Because if you can hear that well, yes. You can do everything else exactly. better yeah. because you know what's going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even in more complicated pieces, yeah. go back to the simple makes you play it better. Mm -hmm. You know, go mm -hmm. back to the bases of it. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, I'm glad I asked. Yes, well. <laughs> I'm glad I asked about your teaching. I just learned <laughs> a few things now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to go jump right into your, your album, your new album. Great. It's called Mixed Feelings. Mm -hmm. The best title I've had so far. <laughs> I've been doing this podcast for a, few, a, a couple of years now, but right. this is my favorite title oh really <laughs> yes oh. mixed feelings oh, and i looked into the cd and you wrote like a paragraph that just summarized everything it says i lived in brazil for the first 30 years of my life when i decided to move to another country i had mixed feelings about the new challenges i was about to face it's like you don't even it it makes you want to get the album <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because when I was writing yeah. it or even when I was choosing yeah. the title, I was like, oh, really? Is that it? You know, it's so hard to do it, right? Yes, like, just, yeah. Just yeah. like make that choice. Mm -hmm. and What made you write a paragraph? It's like, it's a, it's a very encompassing paragraph. It just right. summarizes everything. <laughs> Man, let me be honest with you. Um, I did it because no one else would do it you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like we you see like um the cds that sometimes i put out uh how like you have like big names writing yeah right something about it mm -hmm. and i kind of look for uh, people to do that mm. and sometimes you realize that is an expensive thing yeah. you know all the process related to um release an album yeah. right like mm -hmm. to look for uh, label and mm -hmm. everything else right yep, yep. so then at some point like talking to some musicians friends that are more experienced they said i think you just should do everything go for yourself mm -hmm. not by yourself go yeah. for it you know yeah. what i mean because sometimes we keep waiting yes. and the music is there <laughs> and as this is actually if i would say kind of old music if i consider that i i compose it like 
a while ago. Mm -hmm. And the time was just going and you're waiting for this opportunity. And I said, you know what? It mm -hmm. should be now. So yeah. I just wrote it myself. Nice. I mean, in the, the most honest way I could yes. do it. You know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's simple. Very, it's very <laughs> honest and very straight to the point and yeah. very relatable. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, you were telling me how long it took mm -hmm. and uh, how you guys went in and recorded the first time yes. and uh, decided to go for, for a second time. Exactly. Uh, do you want to repeat that story? Of for, course. For us? Yeah. So um, I went to William Patterson University for my master's, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, that's how I moved to the United States. Okay. I And it was a great experience. And when I was finishing it, like in my last semester had this opportunity to record at a studio that they have there yeah. as a project of one of the students that was a sound, sound engineer student. Mm -hmm. And I invited these musicians that I really like to play with them. I met them in New York uh, playing gigs um, and we recorded and it was a great experience. I learned a lot, mm -hmm. but talking to them, uh, we decided to wait and not release that uh, that sound aversion yeah. because they thought that we could like have a better uh, situation uh, we'll have more time to play before we really record you know mm -hmm. so that was it I had it and it was great to have it because I use it a lot in mm -hmm. several situations mm -hmm. to promote myself to promote the, the music yeah. and then like a few, maybe two years later right I think that yeah, that was 2014 2016 I I thought, you know what, that's it. I need to go for it now. Yeah. And I had other songs to record at that point. I had other ideas. So I actually went to talk to Homero Lubambu, which mm, is a guitar play yeah, player, Brazilian yeah. guitar player. Amazing. Does he live in New York? New Jersey? Person. He lives in New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. And I went to one of his shows. He was playing with Joyce, mm -hmm. a, a Brazilian singer that I, and composer and mm -hmm. guitar player. I love so much. They were playing at Birdland, so I was all like, oh my God, so <laughs> anxious about it. You know, I'm going to mm. talk to him. Um, and I did, you know, I I went there, I said, hey, I love what you do and I would love to work with you oh, in my album. Would you do it? I said, well, let's talk. And and then, you know, we talked about it and he agreed to, to help me. Mm. So that was the plan for it. The other album I released, like in 2016, Vivenda. Okay, that's yeah. how it's called. Mm -hmm. I could come back here for the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I um, to it actually. Oh, yeah. you did. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got the most difficult thing to make it happen, mm -hmm. in my opinion, to put an album out is just like to synchronize everybody's schedule. Yeah. You know, like yes. for one rehearsal, for one day at studio, especially if everybody's yeah. very busy, that's yes. really hard. Yeah. So when that finally happened, I got two days at the studio for that album. And the first day was very productive, mm -hmm. right? We recorded so much stuff because we had a rehearsal before and it was really good. So then I was like, you know what? I think I have enough time to record that music mm -hmm. that I recorded two years ago. So yeah. that's that's when I contact these other musicians that are in this album. Yes. And they they were all free, mm -hmm. thank God. <laughs> and we did it. So mm -hmm. then we that we did that in the second day. I remember it was uh, September eighteenth and yeah. September two thousand uh, September twenty second. Mm -hmm. um, these two days I got for this to do and. Yeah, the second day we recorded this album. Yeah, nice, nice. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I was just, you mentioned Romero, and then I'm looking at all the other musicians there. Everybody seemed to be like a top notch <laughs> in their field. They are yeah. great musicians, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and great people. Yeah, I. Do you want to talk I'm about lucky. the other musicians, like mention their names? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Peter Slavov, mm -hmm. uh, bass player, I. I love his playing so much. Mm -hmm. I feel so safe when I play with him. Nice. You know, it's like... Um, and his personality helps a lot because he's always um, positive, mm -hmm. you know, like bringing new things to uh, to the music and, and good vibe, you know. Nice. Um, Homero, oh my God, I can't even say how confident he made me feel 
mm-hmm. in the studio. Yeah. I think besides all the great music that he plays, like mm-hmm. um, the way he acts in the studio is makes you so happy about what you're doing. You yeah. know, he's a funny person. He's a very happy person. You know nice. that that is very it's it's a lot. Yeah. You know. Um, Alex Kautz, a great Brazilian drummer, also a very friend with uh, Romero? Peter. Okay, Peter. Okay. So, yeah, actually, I think I met Alex first and he introduced me to Peter. Now I can't remember very okay. well, but <laughs> Matt Morantz, a great um, tenor saxophone, mm. like he plays other instruments too. Uh, I met him at William Patterson. Okay. He went to school with me. Good. And Philip Gillette, a great drummer and percussionist. Mm. Uh, that I also met William Patterson. So yeah. you see, William Patterson was v- yes, very yeah, present yeah. Like, mm-hmm. at, you know, while I was like working on these songs, actually, mm-hmm. because I was two in school. Good. Right? Nice. And nice. Who I, uh, yeah, I think you mentioned everybody. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yes. <laughs> okay. So one of my favorite is Vamo Nesha. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and there is something, something... I don't want to say it's simple, but I never thought about it, but it happened in that song. It's a thread between the piano and guitar. Right. <laughs> that is just, there's no bass. There, at a point in time, there was no bass. Right. It was just the two of you. I was actually playing the bass, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, oh you were it playing, is the, yeah, yeah, but there's and, no, and the piano, yeah, yeah absolutely. The piano, there's yeah. no, like, And it's bass like, instrument. oh, this is, this is revolutionary. This is simple, is, but very is revolutionary. Great, right? <laughs> Actually, look, it's interesting that you mentioned that because there's an album that is one of my favorite albums and was like a ba- like a basis for me when mm-hmm. it was um, starting getting connected more connected to Brazilian instrumental music and jazz because but I I first started like uh, studying classical okay. right so for a while in my life I didn't have a connection mm-hmm. with this music. The album is, um, it's called Duo, and it's uh, Romero Lobambo with Cesar Camargo Mariano, mm-hmm. a Brazilian mm-hmm. uh, piano player. And they do that okay. in the entire album, mm-hmm. right? This duo in between piano and guitar, yeah. and with the piano, doing the bass for the guitar and the guitar, mm-hmm. accompanying the piano. When mm-hmm. he, and I'm such a big fan of it. And like mm. Brazilians um, that are connected to this music mm-hmm. uh, are also like very into this album. Yeah. So th- that moment for me was very special okay. because I was doing something that I I I I were I'm used to here mm-hmm. in this album and and the fact that I was doing that with Homero that is an idol for me yeah. was just like oh my god I wish I could record an entire album doing that mm-hmm. just me and him yeah. you know I, I actually. Like- it is one of my goals. I I hope one day it's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> that was just that was good because it's like the whole band just dropped out. And I know. It was just the two of you. I'm like, yeah, it I was really, kind of their yeah. idea, and I loved it when yeah. they said it because I was yeah. like, oh my god, yes, this is <laughs> good. This is fun. Nice. <laughs> uh, another song. Uh, I I don't want to mess up the spell, the pronunciation. Ligia. 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 Okay. Yeah. I like how tender and relaxing it is. It's like it a is ballad. very yeah. relaxing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of different from um, the other songs in, in the album in a mm-hmm. way that it's um, there's lots of space, right, and silence. And mm-hmm. um, it's a very beautiful song, like uh, Don Jobim composition. Mm-hmm. Um, the lyrics, even though I'm not singing the song, are very yeah. interesting and... He's, he he says um, he's denying how much he wishes to be with that woman, you mm-hmm. know. And so I've never dreamed with you. 
I've never thought about like going to the movies with you. Mm. And I've never, and all these things that he's actually yeah. absolutely thinking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he wish he would do with her, but <laughs> he's not, you know, I've never wanted that. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I love this song so much and I wanted to do something like with the space, you know, just yeah. um, enjoying the melody that's yes. so beautiful yeah, indeed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, like you said, there's more space in the song. Yeah. It's like just focus on the melody and, and 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 just like we were talking about keeping things simple exactly <laughs> like that was very simple but I very powerful know, absolutely at the same time. absolutely nice. <laughs> um i also uh connect with another one patience right yeah I like the groove it is a nice groove yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah this song it's it's interesting. I I just came up with the melody and we kind of found a groove all together, you know. Um, this song, uh, well, when I was composing it, I was uh, thinking a lot about how, how much we need patience when we move to a new country and you don't know people and you don't know exactly how things work yeah. and you know you need to take your time and let things just happen yeah. about relationships mm -hmm. also especially mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like new friends um, all relationship things in general you know it takes time to new people yes. and to view things yeah. right and sometimes I don't know, sometimes you're going away and and then you realize, oh, it shouldn't be that way, it shouldn't be the other way. Yes. And I don't know, all that requires lots of patience exactly. to let things happen, you know. So I was thinking a lot about this when I was composing the song mm -hmm. and oh, I nice. just decided to title it awesome. that way. Awesome. Wow. You are listening to Doing Jazz with Lawrence Chuno. The guest on this episode is pianist, singer, and composer Abelita Mateos. Her new album, Mixed Feelings, is available for download and streaming. If you are on Spotify, please check out and follow the Doing Jazz playlist, a one-stop playlist for songs by all the Doing Jazz guests so far. Okay. I want to go back to the very beginning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know some of the answers to some of these questions, but I'm going to ask anyway. Where are you from? I'm from Sao Paulo. Okay. Brazil. Okay. Yeah. Um, how is it growing up in Sao Paulo? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually, I don't have lots of memories from the I was born in, in Sao Paulo, and okay. it's a huge city, but yeah. I lived there until five years old. Ah, okay. And <coughs> after that, I went to Botucatu. It's a, it's a town that is like on the countryside of Sao Paulo. It's you in the state of Sao Paulo. The mm -hmm. state of Sao Paulo is huge. Okay. Um, that I have more memories of that place, right? Okay. Where like uh, we would live in this house with like lots of green surrounding us, like mm -hmm. just our house and like no neighbors kind of, you yeah. know, uh, for a while. Um, uh, what can I say? Uh, there's so many things to say about growing up there, yeah. but um, I just, the way I grew up was like absolutely connected to my family, right? Um, I'm still very connected to them as you can see like well i was telling you about mm -hmm. the other songs mm -hmm. but uh they are uh, a tribute to yeah i'm gonna parents. talk about yes in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my other cd there's a tribute to my entire family mm -hmm. from my mom's side and um that's how i grew up i grew up like with my siblings i have two brothers um and my parents and we would play together we would uh spend all the time together yeah. very very connected i um i lived with my family until i moved here like in the same house mm -hmm. right in the same apartment yeah. and that's normal 
in yeah, yeah it's very yeah. normal yeah. it's not very normal here yeah it's not normal here right but, it's but in out, other, uh, other yeah, countries other like yeah, yeah. yeah in south america yeah. especially yeah mm -hmm. so growing up there was like was basically like this you know like a very a huge connection with family and uh enjoying nature um for me in Botucatu from mm -hmm. five to 15 years old when I moved uh, back to Sao Paulo was actually first San Caetano do Sul like a, another uh, town like way closer to mm -hmm. Sao Paulo and then Sao Paulo was very different because then I went to a very big uh, town mm -hmm. of you know like wasn't like more like a countryside yeah, situation like yeah. before and I had to Adjust to that. It took a little while. I remember the first week, um, I couldn't sleep with all the noise of cars, and you know, mm -hmm. and I was used mm -hmm. to like silence. And, yeah. But then the crazy things that after a while, I got used to that. Then so like I, when I would go to a calm, like a very <laughs> silent place, I would miss all that noise. You know. I see. <laughs> so, yeah. How did music? Um, come into the equation the equation right yeah. yeah um i grew up in church oh. right well my parents um what, what denomination presbyterian church okay. nice. yeah so i and i was like um uh, we say that mascote in Portuguese. I can't remember when you have a theme and you have like the little the little one that represents the theme. I was like a mascote for okay, okay, okay. <laughs> for the choir because yeah. I love it so much. Mm. I would be there like oh, you're like a cheerleader. Exactly, that's how they call me. Like, <laughs> hey, look how we, you know, little mascote because yeah. I would be there um, watching the rehearsals. Like, I would ah. arrive the first one to arrive. Yeah. You know, like. And I would ask to the piano player, can I turn the pages for you? Oh, wow. I was so in love with it. So at okay. some point, the the um, conductor came to my parents and said, hey, I think she really likes it. You guys should like invest yeah. in it. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe right. Like they, it wasn't part of their... Um, their plan. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, you know, to for me to, to go to study music. And that's how I started. And... And I did that for a while um, in the church. Like when we moved to other places, I continued doing that. I would like accompany the choirs, yeah. play for the, the services, and I mm. do a lot of things related to that. When we moved to San Caetano do Sul, I, my uncle used to live right in front of a big conservatory called uh, Fundação das Artes. Yeah. And that music, was music a concert, music conservatory. Yeah. And I, I was studying music already in mm -hmm. this other town, Botucatu. So when I moved there and I saw that was the very first time I saw instruments, mm -hmm. like other different instruments, yeah. you know, I was like, oh my God, it blew my mind. Like, oh mm -hmm. my God, this is amazing, you know. Yeah. And then I started studying there. I studied there for seven or eight years. And then I went to my undergrad, also okay. in Brazil, in classical piano. Okay. And in between that, I started getting connected to jazz and Brazilian music, mm. instrumental music. Mm. And then, you know, after that, I went to do other things, mm. playing musicals okay. and started actually working with music. Nice. But that's how nice. it started. Do you think your classical, having um, your background in classical music, mm -hmm. um, do you think... It helps in a way. It, is there an advantage to having a background in, in classical music as a jazz musician? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes, it is. Um, it's just like, the thing is like, uh, uh, your background will bring you somewhere and there's mm -hmm. no way to deny it, right? Yes. So, um, a technique is something that helps me, yeah. uh, even though, always could be better but you know i feel that it helps a lot mm -hmm. in uh the way i compose songs um i feel that there's lots of influence you yeah. know but obviously um i feel that i lack other other things that i didn't have because that is my background mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like so what? for example um when i got here and i had this uh 
deeper contact with like great piano players like Mogor Miller, for example, mm -hmm. right? Uh, at William Patterson, which yeah. was just an amazing experience. Um, I saw how like um, to be able to uh, play songs like by ear so much, you know, mm -hmm. in a way that that's how that's how you know mm -hmm. songs how, that's mm -hmm. how like uh, you first connect to something yeah. it's something that i it's not that i don't wish that i i what i have yeah. but i wish i had both mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. because it's also amazing yes. you know yeah. um so i sometimes i I feel that I spent a lot of time learning all that repertoire, like reading it and like um, learning it. But I wish I, wa I was also like learning songs by year mm -hmm. and like as much as I could, you yeah. know, at that moment in my life. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't. So mm -hmm. now I, I try to do to that do as that. much as I can. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so. the good part, I feel like um, you, you, you just mentioned the, the kind of disadvantage but you didn't expand on the advantage of having a classical background uh, -huh. uh i i wouldn't know because i didn't grow up playing classical music right. but i'm thinking that maybe classical music gives you a certain kind of discipline that absolutely okay yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely um i am a very is that the way to say uh, the right way myth methodic okay yeah i I like methods, right? To mm -hmm. to practice, to do things. Yeah. Like I am like that. And classical music just, I'm you know, do that. combines to do, to it so well because yeah, you have to have to be ready to play that repertoire like yes. in yeah. two months, and mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. have to do it, you mm -hmm. know. So it is great you know mm -hmm. it is very good, and there's a lot of it when I teach absolutely yeah. because that that's how I. You know, I learned. Nice. Uh, yeah. But as I said, like, um, there's tons of repertoire that I played and I wish at that time I had a better understanding of harmony or I already knew how to use harmony how I know mm -hmm. nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. My compositions are in the music that I play, jazz and other Brazilian instrumental music mm -hmm. because I was playing such deep harmony and I wasn't so conscious of it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, At that time, when yes. I was young, yeah. you know, when I was like 12, 13 years mm -hmm. old. So that's what I mean that uh, when I say that um, I would like to to be doing that at the same time. And it's also like tricky because uh, I don't know how it is here, but in Brazil sometimes the uh, classical teachers they require a lot of you in terms of like being ready for for interpret all those s songs all those all that repertoire mm -hmm. and to do this other side let's see you know yeah takes a lot too and they want all of your time mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. they want you to succeed and like maybe uh, win that uh, competition, you know yeah. what I mean? Or so I remember when I started going for this other side. Yeah, I would feel like actually um, a little uh, afraid that my teachers would know about each other oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to like be a good student for both. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and you know it's yes, yeah, it's yeah. funny oh, it, it is uh, yeah. oh that's that's very like people other people who are not into the musical art like in, in, in not deep into music wouldn't really understand that would i say that dichotomy that um uh, uh dilemma that you face because they wouldn't they would be like they should both be happy but no because the classical teacher wants you to be really grounded in the exactly. tradition and be really yeah. really good now <laughs> and now today that i'm a teacher i mm -hmm. can understand them so much better yeah, I see. you know what i mean <laughs> because i would feel like upset sometimes mm -hmm. you know and but if you are a real good teacher you want you want the best for your students exactly. and you want 
them to put time on that, you know. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. at the same time, as a teacher, you have to give them freedom True. True. to follow True. their passion, you know. So it's it's a hard yeah. balance yeah. to have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is well connected to the next question I want to ask. Yeah. Um, I want I want to know, you've come this far as a musician and right. uh, you're doing great things, really beautiful projects you're putting out. This one, this uh, album, Mixed Feelings, mm-hmm. I, I really like it. <laughs> uh, and I'm just, I'm not just saying that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That if somebody looks at you, sees you on this CD, the person will think, oh my God, she has such a beautiful life. <laughs> she has the best life ever. Seriously? You know? oh yes. Oh my yeah. God. And Why you say goes, that? <laughs> because it is. It's just what it feels like. You listen to the music, you listen to, you see your website you see all the work you're doing you're playing at bedland and everything and the person will be like wow that's an amazing life <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's knowing musicians i know that it it hasn't been easy to oh get to this God, point absolutely. yeah so would you care to talk about one maybe one challenge you face in your journey to come to this level wow first of all when you say this level mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of funny for me because <laughs> I don't feel that way. Well, I really it's, don't that, feel that way. It's a good thing way. you don't feel that way, but you it know, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel that I'm, I'm just learning more and like mm-hmm. trying to be more places. That's mm-hmm. all, yeah. you know. But as you continue to be, right? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But but the, about you said about like difficulties yeah. oh man um it's 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 hard to be far from my family like uh mm-hmm. not far um mm-hmm. emotionally obviously but yeah. like the distance mm-hmm. um friends in brazil of course um i think to keep dreaming mm. every day yeah sometimes and embrace all all of your choices because of that dream. Yeah, it's very hard. Mm. You know. Can you explain? S- yes, I can try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, some days yeah. that something really nice happens, or let's say you have that beautiful concert, like at Berlin, you just mm-hmm. mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. It was the first time we played there with my own band. Mm. You feel great. You feel like, oh my god. That's why I'm choosing all this, you know. That's why I'm here. Mm. It's you feel like everything. Um, it's in the right place, right? Mm-hmm. But then the next day, not really the next day, but let's say, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. You're struggling. You, you know, with maybe one of your students, yeah. or <laughs> or maybe you're not feeling that way, or missing a lot, yeah. your family, or. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You're so many little things, yes, right? That yeah. can upset you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but then to remember that you have a dream mm-hmm. and you're following it, and mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest challenge. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, I can see that. I can see that. To to keep to keep going, you know, yeah. and at the same time to be grateful to be able to do that Mm -hmm, it's so mm -hmm. easy to forget how man i'm awake today i i'm in good health to do what i'm doing Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and to miss my family i have a family to miss you know to to feel saudades that's how to say you know and to balance these feelings um I'm always talking about balance, right? <laughs> it's, it's, that's, that's what we, we got to do. Rational yeah. people always try to balance things. Yeah. 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 I, I keep trying to do that. And mm. I think it's important not to feel like okay with everything. Otherwise, you just don't move forward. Yes. yes. But at the same time, sometimes you have to, you know give yourself some credit and say like hey you're doing good um this is nice be grateful Mm -hmm. you know and really enjoy you know things that are happening so nice i i totally understand like you were talking about having playing in uh playing at a venue like 
Birdland and then leaving the stage and then the next day you're trying to figure out okay what should i do now and exactly you know, yeah, I, yeah we're I've dealing been, with yeah. a, a daily problem exactly. right there in your yeah. house or whatever you know it's yeah. like <laughs> i've it's, not played birdland but i have that feeling when i'm on stage after playing like on stage you feel the appreciation of everybody you feel like people are validating what you're doing you absolutely. feel the love but sometimes when you leave and you get back home, you feel a little bit of loneliness. Absolutely. You know? yeah. You're just like, oh, wow, what kind, of, what kind of life am I living? I was just on stage, <laughs> just right. doing this thing that I Absolutely. really love. And that joy should last longer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it shouldn't end. It shouldn't end right away. But right now, I I don't. I kind of miss it a little bit. I know I shouldn't be missing it that much, but I kind of feel a little lonely, you know. Yeah. And uh, I just feel like it's a, it's something that we need to get you used to, you know. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and maybe I don't know. Maybe we are a little addicted to it, right? Yeah. That's why we like to be playing like every yeah. day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But at the same time, it must be very difficult to manage a career where you're like are on stage mm -hmm. like most of the days of your life right? yes, yeah. um i there are musicians that do that yes and i admire them so much mm -hmm. right on the other hand i know that they they pay a price for that yeah. sometimes like um personal mm -hmm. like it's hard to have a family yeah. or like i don't know there's who knows each person is a different world right yes yeah so i uh, Right now, I'm trying to deal with myself mm -hmm. and, and my choices about it and pushing, but also trying to respect when I push mm -hmm. and the consequences come, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And every possible, like financially or like in terms of time, having time to this or that, right? Yeah. To, but to watch myself and say, hey, am I happy about it? Right? This is what I want to do, yeah. right? Because everyone has path you know mm -hmm. related to, to that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's hard but it is out there there's people doing yeah exactly <laughs> so if if they're doing right they're taking something from it yeah. good or bad yes and, exactly yeah and, and and it's every every profession has its own difficulty exactly every, yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah <laughs> nice all right so um i want to switch gears we're going to play this little game i make up, i made up it's called turn up mute right Oh. I'm going to give you two options. <laughs> right. Okay. The one you like, you turn it up. The one you don't like, you mute it. When I say like, I just mean the one you're feeling at the moment, the one you want to turn up at the moment. You could live here and decide that, oh, I actually prefer the other one to this one. Does okay. that make sense? Yes, okay. but uh, this is related to uh, questions or... Yeah, questions. Yeah, right. it could be anything. It could be food. It could be... Oh, got it. Okay, so I just say... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Turn up or not? I, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, there's this musician I can never pronounce his name. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, pr I'm gonna write it and I'm gonna spell it and let you help me pronounce it. J O A O. João. João. Right. João. Yes. João. Okay. All right. It's actually John. In John. It's it's the okay. translation for John. Yeah. Okay. João. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the 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 first the first two choices, which might be very easy. Botucatu. Right. And New York. <laughs> oh. <laughs> which one do you turn up? Which one do you mute? Wow. <laughs> right now in my life. Yeah. I turn up New, New York. York. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I wouldn't say I mute. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Well, for, for now, for now. For now, yeah, yes. For now, yeah. What's the name of the other small town? São Caetano do Sul. São Caetano do Sul. Yes. Oh. Yes. It's a very small. Um, and it's in São Sao Paulo? São Paulo. São Paulo, São Paulo. Yeah. okay. Mm. Mm. Where do you live in New York? I actually live in New Jersey. In New Jersey, okay. Yeah, okay. I live in Bloomfield. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Cool. Where I have a little bit of botuca doing there, yeah. right? <laughs> so True. I feel that I am in New York. Okay. I mean, but I'm not, okay. you know. 
Okay. So, yeah. Nice. All right. Two Brazilian musicians right. who have who have a lot in common. You see why? <laughs> João Gilberto right. and Gilberto Gil. Ooh, that's a hard one. <laughs> you have to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right now. Yeah. And look, this is crazy for me to say because I just love João Gilberto so okay. much. I tune up Gilberto Gil okay. because I've been listening to his songs a lot. And okay. I actually recorded one of his songs. Mm. But uh, João Gilberto is always, it's always in my car or, yeah. <laughs> you know. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. Good. Okay, I'm going to mess this up, but I'm going to try. Uh, Il Hia. Right. That's one of your songs? Yes. It's actually a, a Deja Vun composition. Yeah, but, but you sang yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I yeah. recorded it in the album. Uh, Il Hia yeah. and Bonita. Woo! Which one? Which those one? are the two. The, those are the two tracks you sang on, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> right. Um. I would say Aelia. Okay. Uh, the lyrics um say a lot to me. Mm-hmm. Um. It's about being in love with someone that the heart is like really far from mm-hmm. from you or from that moment right you were like uh in into that person and the person is like really far from you Mm. and that i think the way he put that feeling uh with the melody and the song i think it's so deep and beautiful yeah um so yes Mm -hmm. but well i also love bonita that's why it is in my album (laughs) so (laughs) it's true i want i want to talk a little bit about some other songs there um, or one, at least one, just one. Mm-hmm. Paizinho. Paizinho. Yeah. Right. What is it about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a tribute to my dad. Okay. My dad, it's a short guy. Okay. So, Paizinho. Because <laughs> it said little daddy. Little daddy, exactly. Pai, pai yeah. is father okay. in, in Portuguese. Mm-hmm. So, in Portuguese, I have the thing of like putting inu afterwards. Oh, okay. yeah. and so, it's like little version of like oh, so okay. paizinho uh livrinho mm. um everything Livrenia, that is like a neon book it makes it exactly oh, okay. it is a like small book yeah. so little dad is like paizinho it's a yeah. like a loving way to yeah. refer to my dad mm. and um i don't know the way this came up is just uh was it like 2013 I think the first year I was living here that I was in my room practicing and I called home. I called um, my parents' uh, apartment and my dad answered like, and, and I said, oh, Paizinho. And that stayed and that's how I talked to him. And that stayed mm-hmm. in my mind, you know, just that that moment, that feeling of being able to talk mm-hmm. to someone like that is so mm-hmm. far and, and feel everything that I felt, yeah. you know. We talk for a little bit. I turn out different so and I compose a song. You know, oh. it's like, it's like, it's about this connection. Yes, yes. You know, amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow! I could talk to to you about your your work forever, but <laughs> we got to end somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Abelita Mateo. Yes. Thank you for coming on doing jazz. Thank yeah. you so much for having me. Oh, this no is problem. so fun. It's my this pleasure. Is- my this pleasure. Is great. I hope we can do it again. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> great.
Thank you.